I'm the manager of the infrastructure team with SafeWork New South Wales. Um, we uh, have an overall silica strategy, but I guess it's important today for you to recognise that most of what I'm going to be covering, while I will cover the overarching strategy, is about what we in the construction and asbestos services team are doing with particularly the infrastructure and construction industry sectors. Our work health and safety roadmap was developed after we became Safe Work New South Wales. We split from the old Work Cover New South Wales into three sec sectors, which was um, the workers' compensation, um, the workers' compensation regulator, and obviously Safe Work, which is the work health and safety regulator. Um, focus on really declining um, fatalities and serious injuries, and particularly, I think, we're ever increasing focus on illness, which I think is a really important focus that we probably haven't had as much to do with over, you know, a good 10-year history. So it's really good to see that we are having a better focus in that space. We've got some clear action areas, and I guess the one that really falls into this is about those high-risk harm in terms of those injuries and illnesses. Um, and it's also about us being an exemplar regulator. So for us, you know, part of the work that we've been doing with the industry sector is really about getting buy-in from everyone across the industry and making sure that what we're doing is actually providing some benefit, but also that we're able to bring industry along with us. So why are we focusing on silica? Um, as part of the coming together of safe work, there was a lot of uh, analysis done on the data and international and national research. From that, um, safe work came up with two um, specific um, chemicals that they were going to focus on, and one of them happened to be um, silica. So um, we've put that in our health and safety um, in terms of controlling that exposure, and that's across the board, not only in the construction sector, but across the board. But I'm going to be talking about what we're going to do in the construction sector. And obviously, you know, some of the biggest reasons why we're doing that is the amount of tunnelling that is going on across the state, but also the amount of work in... Um, you know, sandstone and rock that's happening, not only in tunnelling, but also in residential um, and excavation work that's happening across the state. So this is a bit of a, just an understanding of our hazardous chemicals and, materi and ex materials exposure strategy. Um, you know, it focuses around a number of different types of activities that we will do, which is both you know, doing that site type activity inspections, um, getting out their workplace visits, you know, awareness, creating that awareness around illnesses and particularly in relation to silica, which I still think um, people don't have a great awareness of the effects and what those long-term health effects are. And we're also doing a lot of research. So we've also had a Work Health and Safety um, Centre of Excellence initiated. Um, we've got a number of data researchers who are working at both the international and national level in terms of improving our data in that space. So what is it that we really want to achieve through this program? Um, firstly, I, th I think awareness is one of the big, big factors and still um, that lack of awareness is a real issue. We have the biggest construction boom that's ever happened uh, in this state. We have workers working in these types of environments who have never been in that type of environment before. And while we have some experienced people who have been, we've also got this whole range and, and a new group of people who are coming in who just don't have um, that awareness. So that's a big part of what we're trying to do. Um, it's also to, for us to understand it. And I think as an organisation for us, we were never, you know, we never had a full understanding of what was actually happening underground. And probably as an organisation, historically, we haven't really had a lot to do with it, apart from some of the major tunnel collapses and things that have happened in the past. We haven't on an ongoing nature actually been down in the tunnels. So for us, that was a big part of it, you know, developing our own people in terms of understanding what's going on. It's to work collaboratively with industry, and that's obviously a big part. Um, if we don't get industries buying into the things that we're doing, we've already lost the caper. Um, you know, we have a lot of... A lot of um, specialised and highly skillful people across the industry sectors who we need to work with and we need to get on board in terms of making this change that will be long term um, and hopefully will you know be of benefit to the future generations. We've conducted a number of um, site visits within the tunnels um, and that's every major tunnelling project 
um, in the metropolitan region. And been doing assessments, hygiene ass assessments, we've been actually looking at the data and we've been looking at the work practices that are happening across those, those um, tunnelling contractors. Um, and really been gathering that information on what is good practice, what do we expect that we should see down there, and you know what are some of the challenges or what are some of the areas where we think we can actually improve um, and make a difference in terms of reducing that silica exposure. Again, continuing in collaborative discussions, and I think you know we've initiated an air quality monitoring group, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but I think that's been a really successful um, way to get all the major players together and actually just start these discussions about where we're at and where as an industry do we want to get to. Um, and, and, I, and I think, certainly from my point of view, um, it's been a really successful um, um, group to get together and actually shows what people can do where they have the will to actually get together and start talking about some of these things. I guess it's always important to, when we are going about these things, it's important to, to look at the good things that are happening and certainly in this industry sector, as opposed to a number of other different sectors, there are a lot of positive things um, happening in the silica space. And I think as an industry sector, it's an opportunity for them to actually influence and provide positive um, I guess, futures for other industry sectors where we can start making changes after the ones we've made in this industry. So without going through all of them, that you know, some of the ventilation that we've seen is, is really good when it's put in place properly and is really effective in terms of what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, we have had use, and it's consistent and inconsistent at times, of misting systems, the use of brattice and curtains, um, blocking off areas of the workspace and, and setting up the proper ventilation to get rid of these, these, these dusts. Um, you know, issues that prevent people having to get out of cabins. You know, um, there was a lot of problems. You know, you have positive pressure cabins, which is fantastic, but if you open in a door, um, it takes away from the engineering control that you put in place. So in terms of that, it's been really good and there's certainly been some good compliance rates in certain areas down in the tunnels. So there has been some really positive things that have occurred. But uh, along with that, there's obviously also some challenges. And some of the challenges that we're trying to work through at the moment um, with the different joint ventures is, you know, really what does that good practice looks like? For us, as a regulator, we've been going down and doing visits to all these tunnels. And the practices across the tunnels are, are sometimes quite different. So the challenge for us, and I think for the, for the contractors themselves is to say, firstly, why are they different? And if they are different, you know, are they providing the same le level of safety that we would expect? Um, so they're some of the things that we're really going to be working on um, over the next couple of months in terms of trying to achieve a better consistency. Um, and in particular, that reducing the concentrations of silica dust, it is a challenge. And there are areas where it's just sometimes very difficult to achieve, but then there are other controls that you have to put in place if that is the case. Um, the level of awareness we've sort of talked about, and I think, you know, across the board in this sort of um, environment, there's always been a really heavy reliance on PPE. And I think wherever we can look at um, options in terms of those engineering controls and how we can actually control these things at the source, that's always going to be a much more um, positive um, benefit if we get, get to that space rather than the lower order controls. So one of the things we're really proud of is the um, Air Quality Working Group. I think that's been a really um, significant achievement in terms of getting um, a group of people who are um, often opposed in terms of the types of contracts that they have together to actually come together and start talking, which I think has actually been a major achievement. And that committee is really about trying to say, you know, what, 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 are, what are we about? This is not about, you know, getting anyone's um, 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 technological advances or, or having a, 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 an improvement in, in um, contract relationships. This is all about sharing information on the health and safety and how we reduce the exposure to this type of uh, dust. And I think, you know, the, the, it, was, it was a hard to start start with, but now we're actually there. I think it's really showing some good results. 
Um, it's also about sharing the results of de-identified silica monitoring. Um, the mines do it really well. They have a really mature dust committee that are um, very mature in the way that they share information. And I think if we could get to that space, it would be a really positive um, environment and place to be in. It's about sharing what good practices are. And in terms of those inconsistencies, you know, are, is this one better than this one? Or is this one better than this one? And why is that? You know, is it going to create extra costs or resource issues? Or actually, is that just the one that we all should be using? So I think those conversations can all be uh, beneficial. And also, obviously, getting feedback on the challenges that are faced by everyone. And one of the things that we see constantly is that the challenges remain the same across the, across the um, tunnels. Um, and you're all facing the same challenges. So if you can come together and deal with it on a conglomerate basis, it's always going to be beneficial. Um, and also as a cons consultation mechanism for that guidance material and trying to develop some what does actually best practice look like in this field. So we've currently had three meetings. We've got two subcommittees that have been initiated. One is looking at health monitoring and I think you know, for all of us in the room, it's pretty clear that there's some real gaps in terms of the way different people are doing health monitoring um, and in particular in terms of the way that people move across different different work sites, how that health monitoring is affected um, is, is a real issue that we're actually trying to tackle and again come up with a consistent kind of um, approach to what that should look like. Um, there's also some work being done on this training package which is really around you know what does what does a good induction look like? You know, what, where should our people be in terms of that edu education space before they get into a, a, a tunnel or one of these workplaces? We've done some joint visits um, with hygienists, as I mentioned before, and that's across all the tunnels um, to have a look at the results and to just see what's going on down there. Um, and we've also done a couple of visits to the mine rescue facility, and it's interesting to see the different approaches from the mine sector to the tunnelling sector. And obviously there are differences in terms of, you know, the types of environment that are down there, but there's a lot of similarities as well. So I think that's been a, a, a good thing for us. Just to um, finish off, I'd like to say that it's been a, you know, it's been really great working with the industry. We've now got a number of meetings um, with all the uh, joint venture partners where we're actually going to discuss um, what we can do now in terms of some changes and how we can reduce that silica exposure with really um, basic things that can happen right now and then what are we going to do in terms of being able to work with you in some of these more complex um, areas of, of exposures where we haven't quite got to what best practice or even what compliance might look like, for instance. So particularly some of the back end works that are starting to happen, benching, you know, even some of the above ground works where I don't think we're quite there yet. So um, looking forward to the next couple of months and being able to get to a place where we're um, being able to deliver a bit more in terms of what compliance looks like. So thank you.